Hey everybody, welcome to the show. My name is Michael Lofton, host of Reason and Theology. I wanted to offer my thoughts on the Society of St. Pius X, a few just brief thoughts. And let me say at the outset, I think that a bigger concern in the church than any concerns that the SSPX may pose is, of course, the liturgical abuses that we find all throughout the liturgies in especially the United States, but even abroad in the Novus Ordo. So I do want to recognize that that's, in my opinion, if that's not an equal concern, it's perhaps even a greater concern than anything that we might say about the Society of St. Pius X. So I want to make sure that my comments are situated in that context. That being said, I do have some concerns about the Society of St. Pius X, but let me also mention some things that I think that they do well. I do think that they celebrate the traditional Latin Mass very well. I think that their intentions to celebrate the liturgy in a traditional way, free from abuses, is commendable. I think their intention to maintain tradition and the traditional Roman rite and the celebration thereof is also commendable. But I do have some concerns. And let's put aside the question of whether or not the Society of St. Pius X is in schism. Let's just table that for a moment because that's often discussed. But something that is overlooked in my estimation is the question of whether or not the Society of St. Pius X maintains a position doctrinally that's untenable and that would go against the indefensible respectability of the church. So what I'm referring to here is their position, which you can see in the video that I am linking in the description for the show notes below. You'll see them talk about how one should avoid going to the Novus Ordo. They say that the Novus Ordo objectively considered and promulgated, not just the way in which it can be abused, but actually what has been officially promulgated is offensive to God. And again, that's in the video of the show notes that I will link below. But they also say that it contains elements that are harmful to souls. And again, they're speaking about the liturgy objectively promulgated, not abuses. We all agree that liturgical abuses are harmful to souls. We all agree that those should be decried. But what they're saying is even the liturgy objectively considered as it has been officially promulgated is harmful to souls should be avoided. A person does not have an obligation to attend one of these liturgies if that is all that's available to them. And of course that the liturgy is an offense to God. I think those are positions that are incredibly dangerous in untenable. They might even fall under various theological censors, which is ironic because the Society of St. Pius X wants to preserve a traditional understanding of the faith, and yet I think that some of these statements fall under various theological censors according to the traditional scheme of things, and especially the traditional understanding of the indefectibility of the church, which is my biggest concern. So the, the question is, can the church officially promulgate a liturgy that is offensive to God and harmful to souls. I believe that would violate the indefectibility of the church. Now, if you say, yes, the church can do that, I think you're already heading out the door of the church. I think you're on your way elsewhere. If you really carry that through to its logical conclusion, you'll end up finding your way outside of the church, probably to Eastern Orthodoxy, but maybe back to Protestantism or something else like that. If the church can promulgate a liturgy that is objectively harmful to souls and an offense to God, I think it's game over at that point. The church no longer is indefectible in its administration of the sacraments. I think it's lost that one, which is an essential characteristic of the indefectibility of the church. So I think that this is a deal breaker. If I really maintained this position, I don't see a good reason to remain Catholic at that point. If the church can hand me something that is harmful to my soul, I should no longer trust that church. And that's why I think people who maintain this position often will carry that position to its logical conclusion, and then go elsewhere and leave Catholicism. So I think that this is a very, very dangerous position, however good their intentions might be when they express this position. I'm just simply considering, objectively speaking, whether or not this is a harmful position to adopt and where I think the conclusion leads to if a person is consistent and carries it to its logical conclusion. 
Well, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts there in the comment section. I'd love to hear your comments on, on what I've said or what the SSPX has said. And maybe if I've misunderstood the Society of St. Pius X, please correct me. I'm open to correction. If I have at all misrepresented the society, I apologize. I'm not trying to misrepresent them. And if this is not the position that they maintain, great, wonderful. I'm glad to hear that, and I'm more than happy to be corrected on that. I sure hope I've misunderstood the Society of St. Pius X and that the fault is with me and not with them. I'll link you to the video where I'm basing this off of, although it's not the only place. There are many other places where it seems the society is saying these various things. So consider them, and please correct me if I'm wrong. But if you've liked this show, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, share this on your social media, and also if you want to support me in what I'm doing here, patreon.com forward slash reason of theology. You also get access to extra content. We'll see you later. God bless.